In the first episode of this series, Melanie and I talked about the purpose of work, chores. Do we give them to our children? Should we not? What does the Bible say? So if you haven't already listened to that episode, please go back and take a listen to that one first and then join us as we continue the conversation in part two. Welcome back to Parenting to Impress, your go-to podcast to learn practical ways to love God and love others and impress this on the hearts of your children. I am your host, Heidi Franz, and I am joined by my dear friend, Melanie Simpson, two moms who have made a lot of mistakes, but have found grace and truth along the way. Okay, so we've covered preschool. We've covered younger kids also. One of the things that you and I are looking at as we are launching our kiddos is how do we prepare them for life? So what are things that you have your kids do now as chores so that they're ready when they're on their own? Yeah. The basics, laundry, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And just managing your space, Mm -hmm. putting things away, keeping it tidy. Um, We, in high school years, well, probably junior high, high school years, started teaching um, them to complete a recipe from start to finish on their own so that when they left the house, they weren't starving to death. Mm, This is good. This is good. Um, You know, things like balancing a checkbook, Mm -hmm. um, car maintenance, scheduling a car maintenance, keeping track of those things, calling and making your own doctor's appointments. Yes. Those sorts of things. I don't know. How about you guys? What did you do? No, those are all things that we did as well. The one thing that I would add to the recipe is also planning an entire meal Mm, so that you don't end up with five carbs (laughs) and and, and dessert. Wait a minute. I know. It sounds good though. (laughs) But those are the things that we looked at is how do you get a protein, a vegetable, a fruit, et cetera, in a meal? And then what do you need to do um, to make sure you have your groceries there? We talk about how do you use up the leftovers in the refrigerator so that you don't end up with a bunch of things that you're throwing out. Yeah. So it, it's little stuff like that that I realize I think about on a daily basis, but I have to train my children to think about yeah. it. And I mean, and that just, uh, all, those are all the things that go on top of, I would call basic home care, you right. know, taking out the trash, making sure, you know, the, the trash schedule, taking care of the exterior of your home. I mean, including your kids as you are thinking through home maintenance, you know, when do you schedule the AC guy to come check your AC? When mm-hmm. do you schedule your pest control gal to mm-hmm. come spray for bugs? What does that look like? Do you even do that? So the things that you said you take for granted that you just do, right. hey, come over here. I want to show you, this is how I'm doing this. This is how much it costs. Right. This is how we budget for this. Those sorts of things. It's not going to be perfect. We just launched our oldest. Mm-hmm. He is he's getting married on Sunday and there are still things that he calls and he's like, um, you guys didn't tell me about this. <laughs> <laughs> because there is so much. And I know I fall into that pit of going, it's just easier for me to do it. Preach. (laughs) (laughs) Because it takes so much longer to train them to do these things. But then I'm reminded, Heidi, yeah, you can do it faster, but you're missing out on an opportunity to train. And I get convicted by the Holy Spirit going, oh, Heidi, you know what? Really, that's selfishness. If I get to the core of it, it's selfishness. Now, yes, there are times when mom, whether it's with a two-year-old or whether it's with an 18-year-old, there are times when mom goes, I just have to get this done, but I need to make sure that I leave time in my schedule to be able to do those. Okay. Here's another thing that I want to um, have a little discussion with. I do not want to raise soldiers. Okay. What do you mean by that? Well, I don't want to raise children who just say yes, ma'am and no, ma'am, and do whatever I tell them to do. Okay. So people pleasers. Absolutely. And with chores, I do not want my kids to wake up every morning and go, okay, I'm supposed to take out the trash. I'm supposed to clean the mirror in the bathroom and I'm supposed to sweep the dining room floor. One of the things that we are working on with our children is taking initiative and see what needs to be done, not just what have you been told Mm -hmm. to do. And I think from a spiritual aspect, that's what God is wanting us to do. We go back to that Henry Blackaby comment that we talked about in the last episode. What does God, what is God doing and how can I jump in? So let me give you an example. 
the child comes home from school and he's the first person home and he sees that the dishwasher needs to be emptied. Now he has a choice. He can place his dishes on the counter or he can take five minutes, empty the dishwasher and move to the next point, even if it's not his job. What else can you think of? Or um, with pets, are there you know, pet things that need to be handled either inside or outside? Mm-hmm. Um, laundry to be put away. If there's a you know, basket full of laundry in his room, oh, I could quickly get that done and then get started on homework or whatever. Or before I even have downtime. You know, that's the other thing too, is we get that battle of, well, I've been at school all day. Can right. I just have you know X amount of time to myself sure. first? Well, you know what? There are some kids who can set a timer for 30 minutes, kind of hang out, get a snack, mm-hmm. chill out, and then we'll be able to hop back into work. Right. There are other, in my house at least, there are other kids that that just becomes then 15 more minutes. Can I have 15 more minutes? I'm not, I'm still, can I please have 15 more minutes? Yeah. So two hours later, the chore right. is still not done. Exactly. And so knowing your kids, knowing, do you need to, can, can you give them until supper time to do what they need to do? Or is it something that I need you to do now? And you can build trust to show me that you have the maturity to do it in your time frame. And I would say, I just heard you say that with your oldest today. Mm-hmm. I'm trusting you to make a mature decision. Mm-hmm. So so the ball is his court. Right. He, kn- I mean, he knows. You wouldn't say that to him if he didn't know what to do. Exactly. But you didn't have to say anything else. Exactly. Yeah. And that's because you have spent the time training up to this point. Perfect. So here are a couple of ideas that I'm going to add. And they're not really chores, but they're still working on that servant attitude. So let's say you have some guests who have come over for a meal. One of the initiatives that I want my children to take is watching to see if their glass is empty and needs to be refilled with the drink. We want to teach our kids to be watching where can they serve or opening doors. I have literally come to a door and stopped and waited for one of my boys to open the door for me because I want them to take that initiative. I want them to see how can they serve. If we see somebody in a parking lot who, let's say an older lady who is struggling with her grocery cart, I want my boys and my daughter as well to be seen. How can they serve her in that capacity? Yeah. For sure. It is the perfect place where modeling has its fruit. You and your husband have modeled that servanthood Mm -hmm. um, to your kiddos. And so it's not a sense of hypocrisy. And what I mean by that is simply that um, as the parents, you have a responsibility to model service to your kiddos. They will catch that. They will see that just as quickly as they will see if you are telling them to serve, but not doing it yourself. Oh, very much so. We are not saying all these things with this attitude that we're sitting on the couch and barking orders. This is something that our kids are doing alongside of us. And the older they get, the more initiative, the more of the work they are doing on their own. But yes, we have modeled it. So here's my question for you, Heidi. What do we do with the kid that just says no Hmm. or it just complains incessantly? Right. I was reading through some old blog posts, which again, we will put in the show notes that you can read as well. But um, it was, I wrote this blog post about seven years ago and Sweet Pea, who would have been um, seven, eight years at the time, she just could not help her daddy with this chore because it just hurt. And I found in raising our kiddos, those early elementary years, even though we had done so much training in those first five years, age six, seven, and eight, it's just hard to work. And what had to happen was we had to work through those hard issues and the training had occurred. And so I knew it was a hard issue. It was not a training issue or capability issue. Exactly. It was not a maturity issue. It was strictly a hard issue. They didn't want to. And so we had to work through that. And one of my favorite ways to handle that is actually a Dr. Kevin Lehman philosophy that says B does not happen until A is finished. And what that means is 
I am sorry that your body is hurting right now, but remember, we're not going to be able to go to the park to play with Sally until you've gotten that chore done. So let me know when you get your chore done so that we can go to the park. Okay, Heidi, and I know you've also um, talked about one-liners in parenting. How could we use those in this specific arena of parenting where maybe like with Sweet Pea, you've got a kiddo who says, I, I can't, I can't do that work today, mom. Yes. What would be a good one-liner and how would we use it? Okay. So in that case, I would look at Sweet Pea and I would say, aren't you glad I don't believe that? Or bummer. That's one of my favorite one-liners. And just consistently say that. Or if the child goes into whine mode about, I can't pick up my toys. I'm sorry to hear that. Or another one-liner would be, um, you are welcome to keep any toys that you pick up. When the timer goes off, then I'll be keeping those toys that I have to pick up. So just continually saying the same thing to them and then removing the emotion from it. it. You do not need to get into warnings or threats or Countdowns. if you, Yes, all of those things. It's just, I've told you what to do. I need you to go obey. Right. And we will include in the show notes a poster of one-liners that you can use in your home and links to what a one-liner is, more definition of that. But it's also something that the you have to use consistently. You can't say, I'm sorry you feel that way. I'm sorry you feel that way. And then the third time, get into an argument with the child. It has to be something that you use every single time. Okay. So we've talked a little bit then so far about how we can respond to a child who is complaining. Mm -hmm. What do we with, do with the child who flat out refuses? Yeah. And refusal is um, obviously another level. Complaining, typically what I've found is if I remove the emotion and I don't battle with them, then they typically will end up doing it. And then we're working on just a hard issue of following through on obedience the first time. But a child who flat refused to do something, then that is where it would be an issue that then they wouldn't be able to do the next thing they wanted to do. Or it could be that they have to go to bed early that night or something like that. So that you are laying that foundation of in this house, this is what we do. If you do not, then you don't get to do the things you want to do. Because in our home, chores and helping our family is a need. It's not a want, it's a need. Going to the park, going to a friend's house, playing a video game, whatever it is in your family with your child, that's a want. And we've got to balance that out. One thing that I do want to add and is a question that I get is what do you do with a child that has a labeled disability? Um, a child who maybe their maturity is not the level of their age, or a child that isn't able to go from point A to point B as easily. How do you handle that? And I appreciate that question a lot because I understand. I understand the struggles that that can be, you know, with my two boys with ADHD, I learned that I could not give them a list of four things to do. And so one of the things that I did is break it down. So we would start with go put your shoes away, come back to me, and then I would give them go put your clothes in the laundry room come back to me. Then I'd give them the third one. And some of those things that you can break down. But the one thing that I would say is that even those kiddos with labeled disabilities need chores. Because as we talked at the very beginning of this series, is that it provides responsibility for that child. The key is to match their ability with the chore that you're asking. So if you have a five-year-old who is working on a three-year-old level, then give them three-year-old chores because that would be age appropriate. Yeah. I will just add that our oldest in particular had issues with just processing through the order of things. And it kind of like what you were saying is doing one thing and coming back, doing the next and coming back, it would get mixed up in his brain. Mm -hmm. And so I had to have him repeat back to me what Excellent. I had in my instruction. So please go put your clothes in the hamper. What did mommy just ask you to do? put my clothes in the hamper. So I'm verifying that he heard me yes. and he knows what my expectation is. We're all on the same page here. Exactly. And along that, that same thought is be specific. Clean up your room 
could mean something totally different Mm -hmm. to a six-year-old than it means to you. Mm -hmm. So get those expectations out and make them clear to your kiddo. That might mean a little chore list or a pictograph of what Mm -hmm. does a clean room entail. Mm -hmm. And just remember too, that even for kiddos who have significant issues, even wheelchair bound or just physical mobility issues, you can still include them as helpers with mommy. Yeah. There is still purpose and value in every human life. And having them come Absolutely. alongside you is, ex- I mean, it's its extremely important to that child to let them know that they have value, bring value to that family. Oh, I love that. And I would also add to that a visual schedule can be really helpful. We took the camera through our home. And I took a picture of what it looks like when the sink is done. I t- we um, actually, um, Bubs took these pictures and of what it looked like when his closet was clean, when his bed was made. And so he could take that picture and compare what his bed looked like with what was in the picture and did they match up. This will also be included in the show notes, how to make a, a magnetic visual schedule. And so he would move the magnets from one side from do to done and he, we did the training process for him to be able to do that. But yes, giving that purpose, breaking things down. I, I hear parents tell their kids all the time, I want you to go into the playroom and pick up the toys. Their playroom looks like a tornado went through. I mean, it's overwhelming to me. And so one thing that you can do is tell the kids, I want you to go pick up all the blocks and and have a specific container for those blocks. Then have them come back, give them a high five, give them a hug, congratulate them. Great job. And then they have the child go back in and pick up all the red cars or all of the dolls, all the clothes of the dolls, break it down for them to be successful. Another thing that you can do is set a timer and see how many things can you pick up before the timer goes off or everybody pick up 20 things or five things depending upon the child's age, obviously. And so make it a game and have fun with it. The overarching theme here is your tone is going going to really matter a lot to how the Absolutely. training goes. We've talked about this in one of the other podcasts that if mama ain't happy, nobody happy. And mm-hmm. just that, that idea that you really have an opportunity here to set the rhythm and the tone for your household. How are you approaching this? Is this with a joyful experience to get to train your kiddos? Um, or is this a drudgery that you are dreading to do? So, right, right. So to kind of land the plane here, One of the things that we want to encourage you and to remember is that our home needs to be a pool of grace. We do not want to have a home that is so regiment that the kids have a fear of not getting their chores done or not matching up to our level. You know, there are days when my kids have activities and so the dishwasher is not going to be emptied. And there are times where when the kids were little, it was a 70 degree day on January. And so chores were dismissed so that we could go outside and enjoy the beautiful day God created. We need to let grace be the base of our parenting. And I will just kind of piggyback on that. We don't ever want to become the dictators of our household. Mm -hmm. Um, And again, we talked about this in another episode. Um, Love is not felt through, um, you know, finger wagging and barking instructions, drill sergeant tree. Um, I don't think that's a word, but I just made it up. Sounds good. And um, it is important that our kids know that we love them regardless of their success or failure mm-hmm. at completing a chore, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, yes, we are training that as our job, but our intrinsically, our love for them is not dependent on the outcome of that chore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, are we going to stop just because they didn't do it right? Of course not. And are we going to stop because they were successful? No, there's more to do. Right. So on either end of the spectrum, we are still pursuing good work. Um, but either way, we ha- this household is a place where you can learn from your mistakes mm-hmm. and we will celebrate your successes. Mm, I love that. That's grace. That's grace. Absolutely. I love that reminder. And I would say as a mom or a dad, if you're listening to this podcast and you go, wow, this is something I need to implement. I want to tell you that this takes time. It is not something that's going to happen overnight. I would encourage you to start with just one training 
whether that is just putting their clothes in the laundry room or in the laundry basket, start with one thing and then increase from there. But this is something that occurs over 18 years. It isn't something that is one and done. So give yourself time, give yourself grace, but then also make sure you give yourself the time to do the work. It's going to take time, but it's also going to take daily time. Right. That double, right. that double meaning there. Yeah. And there's grace for you too, um, for the parents who are, maybe you're thinking, man, we dropped the ball on this. You know, Johnny is now 10 and he has not had to do one chore. Mm-hmm. Um, that's okay. I mean, this is a perfect opportunity for you to model asking for forgiveness of your child. Like, hey, we really, you know, we dropped the ball and we have not necessarily failed you, but we have missed, misstepped here in an opportunity to train you. We're asking you for, for your forgiveness and we're going to do it differently from now on. Yeah. So starting you know, tomorrow, we're going to ask you to do, like Heidi said, what this one thing and go from there, build on that. And come and join our conversation on the Parenting to Impress private Facebook group and share what you're experiencing. Ask your questions because we're all learning together. Yes. This is something that Melanie and I both have made a lot of mistakes, as we say in our intro, but there is grace for all of us. We want to thank you for listening to the Parenting to Impress podcast. Be sure to visit abcjesuslesbian.com and check out the show notes for more information on topics shared in this episode. Please subscribe and share with your friends. Thank you.